Welcome back to the Sarah Kleiner Wellness YouTube channel. Today, I just want to do a brief video on foods that are essential for reversing leptin resistance. Now, if you know me, I don't love talking about food so much anymore because it can bring up a lot of emotionality with people, but I get asked all the time about food and leptin resistance, so that's what we're going to talk about today. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I am a certified nutrition coach with the National Academy of Sports Medicine. I'm also certified as a quantum coach with the Quantum Biology Collective Levels 1 and 2, a quantum health coach, and I've just completed the New Biology Clinic with Dr. Tom Cowan and that certification, and I've worked with clients over the last 10 years, probably more than that, to optimize nutrition, optimize health, and I've been working in this space of circadian biology and quantum biology for the last few years to optimize hormones and health. So welcome to the channel. I also have some free resources down in the show notes. If you're new here, you can always go to my website, www.sarahkleinerwellness.com. Go to the free resources tab. I've created several free eBooks on how to build your perfect quantum day for health and how to use things like blue blockers. I've got a lot of free information. So thanks for being here. So let's talk a little bit about foods that are helpful for leptin resistance. The first thing I want to talk about is DHA. Now, I know this can be controversial. People are afraid to eat seafood because of heavy metals. So I'm going to put a link down in the show notes for my dear friend, Dr. Sarah Pugh's YouTube channel and an interview she did with Dr. Michael Crawford. They really bust a lot of the myths around seafood and talk about how it is essential for the brain and essential for inflammation. And when we look at the scientific literature around leptin resistance and DHA in particular, and I'll drop some studies in the show notes for you as well if you wanna go look at these, it's important to know that DHA, even supplementation, which I'm not a fan of and we'll talk about in a minute with macular degeneration, uh, even with supplementing, it was shown across the board that taking DHA and EPA lowers serum leptin levels. The mechanism behind this is pretty interesting, I think, that leptin resistance actually starts in the brain. So when you have leptin resistance, the stored energy on your body and your brain, they're not able to communicate. And so this is going to downregulate your thyroid. This is downregulating your sex hormones. This is downregulating your immune system. Elevated leptin also leads to uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines. And so it's just an issue, right? And it's leptin resistance really starts in the brain. So the mechanism with DHA and EPA is that it brings down brain inflammation so that the leptin receptor can actually get the signal from leptin, from that stored energy on your body that can take place, right? And so this is one of the mechanisms and one of the reasons why DHA is so super important. Now, the largest concentration of DHA is actually in your eye. And so this is why blue light is so harmful for the metabolism, one of the reasons, well, one of the reasons is it destroys melatonin production, but it also it brings down your DHA. And this is also shown in the literature. It's also shown that blue light imposes macular degeneration. And so when we're talking about uh, fatty fish and DHA in particular, there was a study done that showed that fatty fish actually prevented macular degeneration and DHA EPA supplementation had no impact on macular degeneration. So this is important to note, when we're eating wild seafood, it is in the SN2 position. If you are just getting dehydrated or uh, fish oil supplements, not only can those oils sometimes be rancid and not bioavailable to the body, but they're also in the SN1 and, or SN3 position. And so the brain and the nervous system cannot use them appropriately. So if someone is looking to reverse leptin resistance, I'm going to recommend four meals a week, maybe five meals a week, where they're having a small fatty fish. I'm a huge fan of salmon roe. When I was pregnant and I was gagging on everything, but I wanted to make sure I got a good bioavailable source of DHA and EPA for my baby, I would go to Vital Choice online and I would buy the flat of the wild salmon and I would 
put it on parchment paper. I would freeze it, keep it in my freezer and I chop it up and swallow it like a pill. And that is, I find the easiest way for people to get their DHA into the body, the EPA into the body to help with leptin resistance. You can also eat oysters, you could do sardines, you can do mackerel. I like those in water. I think those can be really helpful as well. Um, but again, if you're concerned about seafood, then check out the video that my friend, Dr. Sarah Pugh did with Dr. Michael Crawford, where they talk about this and maybe bust some of these myths and break some of these things down. I just want to say before we get to the next thing, so I'm going to talk about two topics here. Next thing we're going to talk about is protein. Um, I am running a leptin practitioner course called the Leptin Master Plan. It is registering through this Sunday uh, and Monday, April the 1st at an introductory level. So if you want to get in on that, there's a link in the show notes. I also have a 21 day leptin reset, which is like the protocols. It's going to tell you what to do to reverse leptin resistance. And you don't necessarily need to understand all the science behind it. The leptin master plan is more for practitioners who want to dive into topics like this, like DHA, like protein, like carbs and fat, nutrition, and the science of light. Week one is all about light, which I talk about all the time and how light can transform into energy in the body how light can actually support reversing leptin resistance and create leptin resistance. So that's really all week one. Week two, we're diving really deep into nutrition um, on the quantum level. So how different macronutrients and things like DHA can improve uh, electrons traveling across the electron transport chain can make that more efficient. So we're going to dive deep into all of that in the Leptin Master Plan course. And if you just go with the 21-day course, I'm just going to give you the protocols. You don't necessarily need to know all the science behind something for it to work. So if you're like, I don't necessarily need to know all that, then check out the 21-day. I'll put a coupon in the show notes for you as well. So let's talk about the second macronutrient, which can be controversial for some people, but it's protein, right? Protein and leptin across the board, when we look at it on nutritional studies and leptin in particular, leptin and protein are shown to have a, an effect where serum leptin levels of protein can go down when we're controlling other macronutrients. So if you're eating a high fat diet and a low protein diet across the board, they saw serum leptin levels go up. If you're eating a high carbohydrate diet and a low protein diet, again, they're seeing those serum leptin levels go up. And if you're overeating protein, they actually didn't see a huge impact of leptin. So um, when we talk about protein, I know I might upset some vegans and vegetarians here, but we need to talk about bioavailable protein. Um, I'll put a list for you. So we're talking about meat, wild seafood, uh, eggs. Maybe if you have inflammatory uh, autoimmune conditions, you might want to avoid the eggs and just stick to the meat and the fish. When you look at IgG studies, when you look at autoimmune conditions, um, it's shown when you're eating things like beans, nuts, seeds, and grains, lectins, uh, there's actually some interesting data on lectins and leptin and how this can bring leptin levels up. But you want to stick to low anti-nutrient uh, sources of, of protein, which would be your meat, your fish, things like that because of the positive correlation on satiety, um, because of the positive correlation on leptin, but also the low anti-inflammatory benefits. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video and why DHA is, one of the reasons why DHA is so helpful is because it helps to reduce inflammation in the brain. So if you are eating things that are possibly having a cross-reactivity or causing inflammation in your body, again, like beans, nuts, seeds, gluten, grains, um, even dairy, I, I love dairy and think it can be fantastic if you get raw dairy or don't necessarily go for the American pasteurized dairy, go for European dairy if you can get it. Um, but even that can show that insulin levels are going to go up, which is obviously going to bring those leptin levels up. So when we're looking at protein, um, it is essential for reversing leptin resistance. The amount of protein you need is going to be very bio-individual. So it's going to depend on how tall you are, how much you weigh, how active you are, how much muscle you have. Uh, if you're male versus female, your desired body weight. And I'm not somebody who thinks that you need um, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. I find that that can be a little much for some people. Uh, I like to stick to maybe... Um, 
going to how many kilograms you weigh and going times 1.5. And that is pretty a good amount of protein for most people and dividing that up over three meals. It's really important for leptin signaling. So those are two basic nutritional factors. When we look at leptin resistance and reversing it, the protein is super important. We also want to look at stabilizing blood sugar. So um, on the whole, when we look at um, carbohydrates, especially the grains, the gluten, the sugar, the, the sucrose, the, the foods that are really high in glucose, these have a negative effect on leptin and actually raise leptin. So that's why when we look at reducing leptin, we want to, we don't necessarily have to eliminate carbs a hundred percent. And I find sometimes that is really stressful for people, uh, but bringing them down, right? Because there is a negative correlation with carbohydrates, um, eating too many of them, eating too much fruit and leptin resistance. So if you have a lot of weight to lose, if you are really trying to reverse leptin resistance, then re you really want to take that into account. The last thing I'll talk about here is the fat and leptin. When you look at the nutritional data on fat and leptin, it was shown that things like seed oils, the highly, you know, more inflammatory fats uh, have a negative impact on leptin. They bring those up, but the omega threes, when we're looking at the, um, like the fatty fish, the DHA, EPA, those bring leptin levels down. Like I mentioned in the very beginning. So, and there's also proof that shows that, uh, being in ketosis helps to improve mitochondrial function, which is crucial for reversing leptin resistance. So when we look at a nutritional template for leptin, it's not a one size fits all. We need to take into account hormonal factors, height, weight, age, health considerations, what current health conditions someone has. Do they have autoimmune issues? If so, we really, really need to take a look at other things that could exacerbate that inflammation because we want to, in, we want to really bring inflammation down to uh, reverse leptin resistance because it starts in the brain. And when that signaling cannot happen, again, leptin communicates with the brain. This, this happens when we're sleeping. If that doesn't happen, then things go awry. And if we've got inflammation in the brain, we've got some issues with leptin resistance. So you really have to look at the person as a whole. You have to look at it on a bio-individual level. But I hope this was helpful and gave you some clues about nutrition and leptin resistance. It starts with light because blue light destroys DHA in the eye. Absolutely. Blue light destroys melatonin production. If you don't have melatonin production, your body cannot do autophagy. You cannot do apoptosis. It slows down your metabolism. It creates inflammation, reactive oxygen species in the body. And so we have to continue to look at that component of light, which is what I will continue to talk about here. But I've had so many questions about nutrition and leptin. I just wanted to make this short little video to talk about it. Now, if you want more help, you can always get my 21 day leptin protocol that is going to give you everything you need to design your own template and really start to reverse leptin resistance using light, all these principles of light strategically, as well as nutrition. They both play a role. You can't just do one or just do the other. That's why if you just do a diet and elimination diet, you're probably going to move the needle but it's only going to go so far if you don't implement these strategies with light. End of story. That's what I experienced this. I've had tons of clients that have experienced this because blue light can raise cortisol and insulin in the absence of food. So we have to look at the whole picture. So the 21 day leptin reset has all those protocols. I also have tons of free videos here on YouTube. If you're a practitioner or just somebody who's really hungry for that deeper level of scientific information, check out the leptin master plan again to get the introductory level offer you'll want to register by monday april the first and this is also going to include six zoom meetings as a group with me and the other people that are in the program that i have those capped out at two hours so i can make sure i answer all the questions as we go through it's it's kind of like looking at a, a protocol versus like an extensive plan uh, with tons of scientific data some tons of citations so you can study all these topics further, but you'll be able to implement these leptin protocols across multiple situations, ages, and situations with latitude where people live. So I hope this was helpful. Hope that gave you some good information. Again, if you're new here, check out my free resources at www.sarahclinerwellness.com. 
backslash free resources. And I will talk to you in the next video.